Thank you, Mr. Knott. Ladies and gentlemen from the press, welcome to this year's annual press conference of E.ON. At the center today is, as always, my colleague, Markus Schenk, who will talk to you about the 2011 results. I will outline the strategy and my com all of my colleagues will be available for further questions. Um, unfortunately, Ms. Schachelhaus isn't available, as has been said, for health reasons. And she really sounded as though it would be better for her to stay in bed. I hope she'll be back on board soon. We will tell you where we are in terms of E.ON's, re Eons realignment. Of, of course, 2011 was the most difficult year in E.ON's short history. The earthquake and the tsunami led to the destruction of the reactors at Fukushima nuclear power station in Japan. This accident rekindled the debate about nuclear's power role in Europe's energy mix and in Germany. And as a consequence, the Bundestag decided to adopt a policy which it called Energiewende or transformation of the country's energy system. And so within half a year's time, it rescinded the operating life extensions for nuclear power. And it also called for the immediate shutdown of seven nuclear power stations, including some of our stations. Other aspects of this policy, which were already part of the government's 2010 energy strategy, include expanding renewables, and these are accelerated now, expanding network infrastructure and promoting a greater decentralization of power generation and increase in energy efficiency. This way, um, Germany has accelerated this transformation and E.ON will help shape, shape this tran transformation. It will be a big challenge for Germany's national economy and for our company and for the industry in this country. That's because we're beginning this transformation in an international environment which is still very much affected by the serious consequences of the financial and economic crisis. Mm. Energy demand continues to be weak in nearly all of our European markets and uh, industrial output is low. And this has a negative effect on our capacity utilization and on prices and margins in our core business, particularly power generation. At the same time, competitive pressure in our gas wholesale business remains high, and it has an adverse impact on our business. And um, we have never seen such big price differences between the European prices, the American prices, and the Asian prices as we see today. In uh, North America, we have 7 euros, and in Europe, 20, and Asia, to, uh, 40, up to 40 euros. That's six times the U.S. price. In this difficult environment, um, we were able to move forward with the implementation of our strategy and um, under our E.ON 2.0 program. And um, this is un particularly unfortunate um, that Ms. Stachelhaus isn't able to here today um, and because um, Ms. Stachelhaus and some of our other colleagues uh, uh, completed a lot of work in that respect. And um, also um, regarding the sale of our long term gas supply contracts with the big producers, we have made significant steps. Um, back in 2011, so last year, 40% uh, of our long-term gas contract volumes were negotiated, and from case to case, we had structural responses to the uh, changed circumstances. And most recently, and this is an outcome of what happened during last evening and last night, I can um, tell you that uh, we, and especially um, your Kildal, has managed um, to come to an agreement with one of our bigger suppliers, the Norwegian company Statoil, um, which will adapt the conditions for Norwegian gas to the European conditions. And this is also a structural 
change that's been achieved and both partners can live with this change and Jürgen will um, comment on uh, some of the questions you may have. Of course, some things are confidential and cannot be talked about. Our 2011 financial results, which Marcus will represent in detail in just a moment, is very much um, affected by the factors I've just mentioned. Of course, um, the effects of the uh, events last night haven't been factored in yet. Um, EBITDA is 9.3 billion euros, and under underlying net income is 2.5 billion euros, which is at the top of our expectations, but of course significantly below the prior year figures. We cannot be happy with that, of course, but the bottom of the trough has been reached. As Marcus will tell you in a few minutes, we expect to return to earnings growth in 2012 and for our earnings in 2013 to be roughly at the level prior to, to the beginning of our consolidation.